Jess from Make a New Crew here, and I've partnered with Lion Brand to show you how to crochet the Haven cardigan. The Haven cardigan is a great one to try even if you've never made a garment before because the techniques used are very simple and I'm going to walk through them step by step. This pattern is surprisingly easy because the foundation of it is one big simple rectangle, which means that we'll be doing very little seaming and no increasing or decreasing. We're going to be using Lion Brand's Color Made Easy Yarn, which is a beautiful Category 5, slightly chunkier yarn. And this pattern calls for a size L hook, which is an 8 millimeter. but more importantly than the size, the pattern calls for is whatever size you need to achieve the gauge that's listed in the pattern. So make sure you check your gauge because that is the most important step you can take to ensuring that your sweater fits. Then you're going to need a tapestry needle and some scissors as well. And speaking of the pattern, you're going to want to have access to it as we work because it will tell you exactly how many rows and stitches you need to work for the size that you're making. And you can find the free version on makeanddocrew.com by searching Haven Cardigan. I'll also link it right below this video. Your other option, which is really great in particular for this pattern, is to purchase the ad-free PDF, which is easily printable, but it also includes a simple stitch chart that makes this stitch repeat much easier to understand, in my opinion, as well as a very simple chart that shows you exactly how many rows and stitches to work to make the size of sweater that you want. So a little bit about how this pattern works. We will start by crocheting a large rectangle, then we'll fold it in half and seam it in two spots to turn it into a shrug. And then we'll work directly into that shrug edge to create a nice chunky collar and some sleeve cuffs. And then lastly, we'll add pockets for a little extra coziness. And I'll cover each one of these steps along the way. For the sake of efficiency, I'm going to be demonstrating the techniques used for the main rectangle in a smaller swatch. So you can consult that free written pattern that we talked about to know exactly how many stitches you need to start out with for the size that you want to make. But there's two ways to start your rectangle and the preferred way is with a foundation double crochet stitch. And this is because then that prevents you from needing to work into a really long chain, which can be kind of tedious. If you don't want to use a foundation double crochet or if it feels intimidating after you watch me do it, just go ahead and look at the free written pattern and look at the alternate way, which is simply to work a long chain and then double crochet into each stitch. So let's move ahead with what a foundation double crochet looks like. So we're going to begin with three chains on our hook here and we're going to work into the very first one. So the furthest away from the hook and we're going to yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over again and pull through. So now I have three loops on my hook and we need to work our first chain because the foundation double crochet is a combination of the chain and the double crochet stitches all worked in one row. So now I'm going to yarn over and pull through. So that makes my first chain. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through just like I was doing a double crochet. So I'm going through the first two loops, yarning over and pulling through the second two loops. So now what we have here is the chain three, which is our first double crochet, and then one double crochet next to it. So let's work another one. I'm going to yarn over, and now I'm inserting my hook into that chain that we created. So it's the first V here furthest away from my hook. And this just takes a little practice identifying, but if I work back under there, and then I can yarn over, we're back to where we were previously, where we have three loops on our hook. I'm going to yarn over to create my chain and now I'm ready to create my double crochet. So I pull through two of those loops, yarn over and pull through two again. So now we've worked another chain and another double crochet. Let's look again. Yarning over, now I'm working back into that chain. So it looks pretty similar to a regular uh, V of a normal double crochet that you would work into, but it's a little, it's kind of crisscrossed. So just know you're working under those two strands there, yarning over, and then we're ready to work our chain, chain one, yarn over, pull through two there for the first part of our double crochet, and then finish up our double crochet with another yarn over and pull through two. So now we have one, two, three, four, total double crochets and we're just going to continue like this until you have the number that you need for the size that you're making. So let's show it one more time. I've inserted my hook there in the bottom in that chain. I'm going to yarn over. So now I have my three loops. I need to create the chain first. That's the foundation of it. And then I'm going to complete my double crochet. So 
I'm going to work several more of these and then I will meet you back here and we'll talk about what to do in row two. And once you've completed row one, if you use the foundation double crochet option, you're just, I just want to point out that you're counting that chain three at the beginning as your first double crochet. So it counts as one, two, three, like that. And if you use the alternate option, again, you're also going to count your chain three at the beginning as a double crochet. So it will look just slightly different than this, but that first sort of bump at the edge, that's your three double or your three chains that's a first double crochet. So make sure you have the correct number of double crochets there worked for your foundation row. And now we're ready to move on to row two. So in this pattern, rows two through five are gonna be what we repeat over and over again to make our rectangle. So this row is a little bit of an outlier, but now we're moving into the main stitch repeat for the pattern. So to do this, we're going to chain three, and this is gonna be, uh, as a row two, it's gonna be a crossed cluster row. So I'll show you what that stitch looks like now. In a row two, we're always going to skip our first stitch, and then because we're gonna work a cross cluster stitch, we actually need to skip the second stitch too. So we're skipping this one because this is counting as our first double crochet. Then we're gonna skip the next stitch and begin our cross cluster in the third stitch here. So one, two, three. I'm going to yarn over, pull my yarn through three times. So that was one, two, and three. And once I've done that, I should have seven loops on my hook. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through all seven of those loops. And you can see that's sort of half of a bobble right there. And now I'm going to yarn over again and work back into the stitch that we skipped that's closest to this one. So this one we skipped because this is counting as our first double crochet. And this one we skipped because it needs to save a space for the other side of the cross cluster. So that's the first half of it. Now the second half of it is gonna go right here in that stitch. So I've yarned over, I'm gonna insert my hook in that skipped stitch, grab my yarn and pull it up. So now I have three loops on my hook and now I need to do that two more times. So each time we do this, we're yarning over three total times. So I have now five, yarn over again. Now we have seven loops on our hook. And once again, I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all seven. So now we've created our first crossed cluster. And in this video, I may refer to them as cross clusters or bobbles, but I'm always talking about this little ball of yarn that's created when we do this crossed stitch. So. As we do that, now we're ready to move on to six double crochets. There's always gonna be six double crochets between these cross clusters. So we're just gonna work in the next six stitches. And then once we've completed those, we're ready to work another crossed cluster. So we're going to skip the first stitch here because we always need to leave that space to work back into it for the second leg of the cluster. So I'm skipping the next stitch and I'm gonna work the first half of my cluster into the second stitch here. So I'm gonna yarn over and insert my hook, yarn over and pull it up. So that's one yarn over and I need to do that two more times. There's one more and then the third time here now I have seven loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all seven. So that's the first half of my cross cluster. Now I need to yarn over and work back into that stitch that we skipped right here. So I'm going to work from the front to the back there, grab my yarn from the back and pull it up. It's important here to pull your yarn up to about the height of the rest of the stitches. So the top of this bobble here and the other double crochets. That'll just make a smoother um, stitch right here. So we've done that once, now we need to do it two more times. One and two, so that's a total of three yarn overs. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all seven loops. And now we've created our second cross cluster stitch of this row. Here's one and two. And with a cross cluster stitch, this is always, row two is always gonna be the wrong side of the fabric. So if you turn it over like this, you'll see a better shaped bobble on the other side. So that's actually all you need to know to work most of the stitch repeat of this pattern. But let's practice it one more time anyhow. So I've just finished a cross cluster, so now I need to work six double crochets in the next six stitches. 
And after we've done that, we're going to skip our next stitch. So that is right here. And we're gonna yarn over and insert our hook in the next stitch a total of three times. So one, two, three. There's our seven loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all seven. Now we're gonna work back into the stitch that we skipped with a yarn over. I'm inserting my hook and grabbing that yarn to pull it around. That's the reason this is called a cross cluster because we're working over that first half of the stitch. So that's one time, two, and three. Once again, I have seven loops on the hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all of them. And as you work across the row in that stitch repeat of six double crochets and then a cross cluster stitch, you'll eventually get to the end where there should be three stitches left. So we have two double crochets here and then the chain three from the beginning of the row. And I'm gonna work a cross cluster stitch into the last two stitches. So I'm gonna skip this one, work into that one, and then work back into the skipped stitch. Our row three is really very simple because it starts with chaining three. That's gonna count as our first double crochet there. And then we're gonna work into each stitch as we go across with a double crochet. So we're not skipping the first stitch here. So that means I'm going to work a double crochet into the very first stitch. And then I'm gonna work a double crochet in each stitch all the way across the row. And as we approach the end of the row here, I have worked into this to the top of this cluster and I'm going to put one double crochet in my turning chain here. And the written pattern lists how many stitches you should have in each row for the size that you're making. So that's a great way to count and double check just as you get those first few rows going to make sure you avoid any mistakes down the road. So for a row four, we are going to begin with a chain three and this entire stitch pattern is alternating a double crochet row with a cross cluster row. So we started with a double crochet row, then we did these cross clusters, and then we worked a double crochet row. So now we're going to work a cross cluster row, and it's a little bit different than row two, just based on how many stitches we start with at the beginning before we work our cluster. So here is my first stitch here, and I'm going to skip that because this, in this case, the chain three is counting as a stitch. So I'm skipping that stitch, and I'm going to double crochet now in the next four stitches. And then we're gonna complete a cross cluster just like we did before. So I'm going to skip this stitch, work my first leg of that cluster into the second stitch, and then we're back into the skipped stitch to complete the cluster. And you can see that just like in row two now, that cross cluster stitch creates a nice bobble on the opposite side of the fabric. And now row four just continues with the same pattern that we did in row three. So it just begins a little differently, but now we are going to alternate six double crochets with a cross cluster stitch all the way across the row. So after this cross cluster, I'm gonna work six double crochets and then I'm gonna work that cross cluster into my next two stitches. And then as you continue in that pattern across your row, you're gonna eventually get to the end where you should work your last cross cluster and then work five more double crochets. So the way that that will look is you'll work one, two, three, four in the next four double crochets and then you'll place your last double crochet in the turning chain. So one way to check your work here is to make sure you have five double crochets at the end of your row as well as five double crochets at the beginning of your row. And that will create this nice alternation between the bobbles on the row two and the bobbles on the row four. So each bobble should always look like it's in between the bobbles below and above it. And the last row we need to practice in order to work the rest of this rectangle is a row five. So in a row five, we're going to work a double crochet row because we just finished a cross cluster row. And the only thing that's different about row five is that we're going to skip the first stitch here. So if you remember in row three, we worked into the first stitch in row five, we're going to skip this first stitch here and work into the next stitch over. And this is just what helps maintain the stitch count correctly as we work these bobble rows. So we've got our first double crochet there. And technically that's our second double crochet because our chain three counts as the first one, but we're working our first double crochet into that second stitch there. And then we're just gonna double crochet all the way across 
placing our last double crochet in the turning chain. And once you've completed row five, you know all the steps necessary to make your entire rectangle. So if you check out the free written pattern, you're gonna see how many times you need to repeat that series of rows for you, the size that you're making. And as you do that, you're gonna be working a row two, a three, a four, and a five, and then you'll start over again with a row two, three, four, and five, and the pattern tells you how many times to do that. And then we will fasten off, and I'll show you how to fold your rectangle into a shrug and seam it. So once you've completed the correct number of repeats for your size, you should have this big rectangle. And our next step is gonna to be to fold the sides in and seam them to create what is essentially like a shrug. So to do that, we're gonna fold our rectangles horizontally, which means that all the stripes should also be running horizontally. And then we're gonna pin along the short sides of the rectangle. So what that looks like close up here is I have the right side of the fabric facing out. So this is the bobbly side and I've pinned along this short edge on both sides of my rectangle, leaving open a certain number of rows and that is dependent on your size. So check the free written pattern to know how big of an armhole to leave open. We're gonna start seaming down here and work toward the armhole and then we're gonna leave this open where we add the sleeves. If you have a long tail left over from when you fastened off or began your chain, you can totally use that for the seaming. But if not, go ahead and attach your yarn. And we're gonna use a tapestry needle to seam back and forth kind of in a zigzag. So I'm gonna work in this case because my yarn's over here through the left side. And I'm working from the bottom up and pulling my yarn out on this side. And then I'm gonna work from the bottom up on the right side. So each of these stitches is always gonna go in the same direction, starting from the bottom, getting pulled out of the top, and then we're just working back and forth in a zigzag. And this is just one technique that I've found that seems to create a pretty invisible join, especially on a raw edge like this. But if you have a preferred way of seaming that you think looks better um, or that you're more comfortable with, go ahead and use that. Whatever looks good to you will work just fine here. So as I'm doing this, I'm taking care to make sure that the rows of crocheting are lined up. So here I have the first row and it's lined up, the second row is lined up, and now I'm working on the third row. And that's gonna help make the most invisible join possible. So we're just gonna continue like this, zigzagging back and forth until we reach the stitch marker or safety pin that you have that is marking the beginning of the armhole. For me, it's kind of hard to see, but it's right up here. So I'm gonna keep seaming to there and then I'm gonna fasten off this yarn and then repeat the same process on the second armhole. 